What's up guys? I'm gonna be getting married, so um, one way to save money on the wedding, I'm gonna actually be making uh, my own photo booth for the wedding that we are also gonna use for the engagement party also. So this is a video on how to actually make your very own photo booth. Check it out. I started out by drawing my concept out to get a good idea of the size of box I need to make. I plan to use a DSLR on top to take the photos. This would be wirelessly con controlled by the iPad on the bottom of the box through an app called the Wi-Fi booth. I'm going to have a section of wood underneath the DSLR to support its weight in the box. I'm also going to place a GoPro in the center of the box to continuously video the booth to capture some fun moments during the events. The GoPro and the iPad are going to be supported by the front panel of the box. I'm also going to have a cutout on top of the box for the camera flash to be connected. Finally, I'm going to place a porthole on the bottom of the box so that I can have all the, the devices continuously charged throughout the event. In this video, I'm not going to talk about any of the dimensions since those will vary based on the devices you use. However, some of the main components that are needed are listed here, all totaling around $200. This allows you to save a lot of money rather than going with a photo booth vendor and you can reuse the booth for all of your events. You can also repurpose a lot of the material here. I started off by cutting the sections of the box into the dimensions I need to fit all of the gear. I then laid out all of my gear and measured the exact dimensions needed for the cutouts. For the iPad, I plan to only cut out the screen portion so that none of the white borders are showing. This also will prevent any users of the photo booth from accessing any of the other iPad functions other than the app that will be there. I initially attempted cutting out the panel using a Dremel since I don't have any more serious machinery to make exact cuts. As I progressed, I wasn't happy with the results on how everything fit or, or looked. Uh, that's when I reach out to my friend Winston Moy for some help using his Shipoko CNC machinery. You may know him from his YouTube videos normally picturing instructional CNC videos or any products that come out of his shop known as the Machine Shop of Horrors. I'll link his page at the end of this video so you can check out some of his stuff. For this I had to take exact dimensions of my cutouts and model everything out in Fusion 360. He first helped me by double checking all of my models. This was necessary since I had never worked with Fusion 360 or a CNC machine before and there were some quick fixes needed on some of the corners and polishes of my designs. After that it was time to let the Shiopoko do its thing and I'm more than impressed with how it came out. Thanks again Winston for all your great help here. I then continued to do some of the simpler cutouts by hand, like cutting out the flash for the top. It was then time to glue it all together and see how it came together. Looks pretty good to me. I then added some pieces of scrap wood with a screw that I could swivel to add some stability to the back of the iPad Pro. On the top, I added small brass brackets to be able to swing it open from the back. I then applied 3M adhesive spray across the entire box and laid out black fabric. Another option would be to stain the wood, but this is based on your preference and what type of look you're going for. Since I plan to leave this box unintended in my events, I added a lock to the box so I wouldn't have to worry about all the expensive gear that's inside of it. 
before cutting out the porthole for my charging cables, I cut away the fabric. This is important so the fabric doesn't wrap around your drill a bit and break it. To finish off the box, I added the brass brackets and then it was time to attach it to the tripod. I first attempted just gluing a nut inside the bottom of the wood, but this quickly failed. I then added a coupling nut with a large washer and a screw to my tripod mount to allow for a tighter fit and more stability. This seemed to help, but the plastic mount on the tripod wasn't doing the trick. I ended up purchasing a cheap light stand, which bypassed the plastic mount on top. This is the trick, as you'll see at the end of the video. It was now time to build the frame of the boot. I first attempted using 3 quarter inch PVC pipe that I spray painted black, which would be lightweight and I thought would be simple enough to put together at the venue. This however was not the case since there were too many piece parts working here. It's worth mentioning that a thicker PVC pipe would have helped, but I decided to try other options. I first tried EMT conduit, which was strong enough for me to cut into 8 foot sections. However, I tried to use PVC joints to save on cost, but this didn't allow for the pieces to stay straight. This could have easily been fixed by using some metal joints, which I was going to purchase, but a friend of mine recommended to try a canopy for the structure. Since I already owned one, I tried this out. I removed the top structure of the canopy and found that this held very well. This seemed like the best option since it would allow for the easiest setup process for the booth at any event. Also, that's my dog Cyrus. Say hi Cy. I then proceeded to sew on the velcro pieces onto my blackout curtains. This was necessary since there were no rods to slide the curtains onto the canopy. For this task I had to teach myself how to use a sewing machine and I've gained a new appreciation for anyone who uses one for a living. Now it's time to put everything together. So the camera, the photo booth is working fantastic. Um, one other thing I'm gonna add on to this is I'm gonna end up painting the, um, the canopy. I'm gonna end up painting the canopy all black so that matches in a lot better. I'm also gonna flatten this out, work on flattening this out a lot better so that's way smoother in the pictures. 
Um, maybe I'll put in a, a backdrop so that it will just be one plane at the end of it. But for a, an under $200 solution, this is going to work fantastic. Really happy with the way it turned out. Um, just need to do some kinks of really flatten it all out. Should be fantastic. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like or subscribe below. If you have any questions at all, go ahead and comment below and I'll try to get back to every single one of you. Thanks for watching.